Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. I have been doing a lot of presidential candidate searching over the last, well, day. <laughs> One day. I did a lot of this yesterday. I mean, I've been thinking about it today, and I was like, you know what? I didn't get a 30 minute message out this Sunday. So, you know what? In place of my 30 minute message, or rather, since I missed the 30 minute message Sunday, this is going to be my 30 minute message today. And if it doesn't last 30 minutes, or if it goes over 30 minutes, because you know how I tend to ramble about things, then so be it. Um, <clears throat> and of course, you know, if, you, if I say something that's offensive to you, hit the dislike button and go to a video that you enjoy and that you agree with. Uh, not a problem at all. The beauty of freedom of speech, it's a wonderful thing, uh, especially that which we have here in the United States, which I call my home country. And since we so far still have on the internet, which is available worldwide, sometimes, you, depending on the country, you, you kind of have to finagle your way into it. But once you know how to get there, it's, it's available. And uh, the freedom is quite, quite nice, something I've grown up with and something that I have enjoyed my entire life. And you're going to hear some things that you've heard from a lot of people, and then you're also going to hear a lot of things from just me personally. <sighs> it's like, okay, where do I begin? Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, the Republican and Democratic presidential nominations. Now, since, my, since I am monetizing this video, since um, if I ever somehow made enough money on YouTube that I would, you know, it would actually be written to, as a check to me that is taxable. Um, I am not under any 501c3. I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. I'm not a tax-free um, organization. This YouTube channel is for profit. Whether it actually becomes more than a hobby or not, that's up to you guys. But, you know, I, this is my, I can say it's essentially whatever I wish. And I don't, I don't have to hold back my opinion on politics, even though a lot of the focus of this channel is religious and theological in nature. And even though this is taking the place of a 30-minute Sunday message, which I missed, uh, and I do apologize for that. Once again, I'm, I'm trying to hop back on the ball. The last few days have been very distracting, busy. I was like, I was like, how do I, how do I want to break this down? Um. I'm not really satisfied with Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. And I think a lot of people would agree with me on that. A whole lot of people would agree with me. Yeah, of all, of all the people in this country, that two parties, you know, we're not talking about hundreds of parties here. Two parties. Of all the people that could have been chosen out of hundreds of millions, these two are the ones that somehow got the presidential nomination. <sighs> you got, and I know a good number of you are feeling the same level of frustration that I'm feeling right now. Probably not for the same reasons, because, and I'm going to get into how I feel about this in just a minute, but you know, regardless of your reasoning and regardless of your ideology, the vast majority of people, I am in the majority for one small section of life, um, the vast majority of people are not satisfied with either one of the candidates. Um, Donald Trump, let, let's start off with him. He comes off very, very belligerent. He comes off very bombastic. He comes off as, I know what I'm doing. If you disagree with me, you're stupid. Um, he will gladly interrupt his opponent to shut them up. Um, and the comment about uh, how he thinks or at least thought about women several years ago. That came to light within the last week. I'm sure that was fun for his um for his party to have to do some damage control on. He's generally he, he says whatever comes to his mind and that would be personally that is an appealing thing to me. If any of you guys know me, you know that I also speak my mind. I'm very loud to the point of being obnoxious and annoying. And that's who I am, and somehow I still have friends and people that love me, and it's, I'm so thankful for that, and it's really awesome. And I actually have 58 subscribers, at least when I checked yesterday. Uh, that number may go down or up, depending on who sees this video today. One way or the other, I'm going to be honest with you guys. And I can deal with honesty. I could deal, even with what his comments on women were, I could live with that. The reason being... Every guy talks about women in pretty much the same way. Every guy's had his moments where he looked at some beautiful woman, 
and a buddy of his was nearby, and he said, you know, confidentially to his buddy, you know what? That's a gorgeous woman. Man, what I would like to do to her. Uh, we've all done it, and let me just add, we may not have worded it the way he said it. Um, it may not have come across as vulgar. But think about it. If I, if, I, if I look at a friend of mine, I'm like, man, I'd love to have sex with that woman. Is that, it may not sound as derogatory or may not con contain any, I guess, words that could be considered profanity. I use profanity all the time on my channel, but for my preaching videos, I don't. So I'm not, I'm gonna, unless it's a direct quote, um, I won't be using profanity in this particular video or any of my preaching videos. When I do want to, when I want to, um, quote somebody, I will feel free to do so, so you guys have proper context. But, um, I don't think what he said is, like, much worse than pr pretty much any other guy has said in regards to looking at a pretty woman and then saying to a friend nearby, man, what I would love to do to her. I don't see him saying, and here will be the quote, you know, grab her by the pussy. I don't see that as being so much worse as some other guy and I will have to include myself in that number, looking at a woman and saying to his friend, man, I would love to have sex with her. You can say it as politely and without naughty words as much as you like. The meaning is still pretty much the same. I guess, I, I guess you could say, well, what he said was more along the lines of sexual harassment against her will. What You, you weren't mentioning anything rapey or molesty. So what he said is much worse. You could argue that. And I, underst and I understand that side of the, of the coin, so to speak. I see where you'd be coming from if you said, well, you know, you and every other guy who said similar stuff, they didn't say it the way he said it. What he said sounded dangerous. It sounded predatory. My, and my opinion on that is that when I and all of my guy friends, and by the way, I mean all, Christian and non-Christian, in and out of church, all of them, when they look at a woman and say, you know, even if it's not, man, I'd love to have sex with her, but man, what I wouldn't do to her if I had the chance. You know, just hinting at maybe not full on sex, but some, you know, something sexual. I personally don't see it as a whole lot better than what Trump did. I just, I don't see it. I see it as a general lust problem that all men have that needs to be overcome. And as a Christian, I especially have impetus to overcome that because my God and my Bible says that that is wrong. So I don't see him doing anything more wrong than any other guy in history. It was crude, it was bad, and a lot of other people, and he was, it was some kind of, it was some kind of TV show involving some kind of soap opera. I, because of my grandmother several years ago, I know what goes on in soap operas and what they perform and act out and talk about is pretty much on par with what he said. So I will reiterate, I really don't have a problem with that footage being leaked. Not only that, uh, let's also be honest, it sounds like something Trump would say. Um, his comments in regards to women haven't always been polite or unbiased or unoffensive. Um, he pretty much looks at women as, you know, these are beautiful, these are ugly cows. It, it's just like, you don't, you don't want a presidential candidate to say it, but for Donald Trump it just sounds like the norm. <laughs> One of the reasons many people do not like him um, and that's, you could, a lot of people could even say that some of the lighter things he said in regards to what he would do in regards to Mexico, what he would do in regards to, you know, just other people in general, some of the statements he's made. He said a lot of offensive stuff. And I'm going to, and kind of going back to my original point, I could actually live with that. I could actually live with the offensive statements. I could live with the childish banter. I could live with him not knowing quite everything that he needs to know because he hasn't been a politician his life. He's been a businessman. Um, and he's been, an, from his statements earlier, he's been an everyman. He's done what guys do. And he's saying out loud in public what most guys think in their heads. And what I personally think a lot of Republicans probably feel and would do if they didn't have the Democratic Party constantly bashing them for saying, you know, hey, this conservative stuff you guys are saying, this sounds mean, this sounds bad, this sounds wrong. And since they have a party opposing them, 
They have to watch their words a little bit more carefully. And Donald Trump simply has no filter. My biggest put off with Donald Trump, other than his lack of experience, because that, if you're going to be, of all, the, of all the political positions to choose to start with, president's usually not the first one to start with. So that in and of itself is an issue. But the other problem, it, the fact that he doesn't know so many political positions. Now, I've noticed how he's gotten a lot more, a lot more, I guess, regulated over the past several months. It just seems that the way he has spoken, I mean, he's still bombastic, he's still crude, he's still offensive. All those things we've learned to expect from Donald Trump, he's still all of those things. But I have personally seen, in my opinion, him tune the dial several notches back. He's not quite saying the level of things he was saying before. A lot of his views have changed and been tweaked to look more like the traditional Republican Party. And it's actually on that line where I find a bit more offense with him. I'm actually a bit more offended by his flip-flopping and his changing of opinions. It's almost like he's making it up as he goes. I mean, the man isn't stupid. He has, he took that small loan of a million dollars and he created a multi-billion dollar empire. So the man isn't a dummy. He's obviously business savvy, whether you want to admit that or not. Despite the bankruptcies that he's experienced, um, despite him potentially screwing over several people to make sure that his company and his person gained more wealth. Despite those things, he, he has a head for business He's been successful. But the way he's kind of making up policy on the go, the way he's learning so much so fast, he ends up flip-flopping on issues. He ends up not sounding what he's talking about. And again, I can deal with having to learn along the way, but with the amount of things he didn't know, the sheer volume of things he didn't and still doesn't seem to understand, that's a very big concern for me. And just the fact that as he's learning, it's not like he studies a, a thing to a, a great extent and then says, okay, I've looked at all this material, and here's my opinion. He'll say one day, here's my opinion. The next day, oh, well, I got some new evidence. Here's my new opinion. And then the next day, or maybe the next week, oh, hey, I got a little bit more evidence. So now my opinion's changed again. And that comes across as extremely unreliable. And as for Hillary Clinton... The whole again, the real pro, the biggest problem that I see there um, is the fact, you know, just all of the illegal emails that she held. Um, the fact that, quite frankly, she should be in prison right now. When when Donald, I have to admit, Donald Trump scored a point when at the pres second presidential debate, she was like, the thought. Essentially, she said, I'm paraphrasing here, that you know, it's a scary thought to have someone like you being the commander in chief and writing laws into existence. And he said, yeah, because I'd throw you in prison. Uh, that was funny. That was entertaining. That's something Donald Trump does pretty well. He's a pretty decent entertainer, actually. And so that was, a, that was a kind of a plus one for him there. What she did there is completely illegal, completely unacceptable, and she should be in jail and out of the running. So it's hard to take her seriously. And on top of that, just based on her own political career, um, looking at the way she she hasn't changed positions as quickly and as radically as Donald Trump, but you can see, since she has had a long political history, you've seen over the years where she's made her changes, where she has taken her stances, and it seems that in a lot of those stances, she chose what was popular, not necessarily what she believed in or thought was right, but she chose and not even necessarily what her party believed in. She chose what was popular that would get people's attention. And then we also have the recent uh, leaks on the Hillary campaign, the way they're basically playing the system. And I'm actually, a, a quick note on that, I'm not incredibly upset that Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party are playing the press the way they're playing. I mean, Let's be honest, if, you are, want, if you're running for president and you want to win, you're going to use everything on your table, all the hands in your hand, you're going to use everything you can to win. I get that. I understand that. I'm more angry at the news outlets for letting so much bias and so much partisanship run their newsrooms. 
Um, it has been it, the, the media for a very long time by conservatives has been you know criticized as being slanted to the left. And just looking at how they speak and looking at what they cover, I would tend to agree with that assessment. And then with this we recent leak that came out, uh, we have um, undeniable proof that that's not just a suspicion or a maybe. That's from certain people, not all people, but from certain people, that is definitive and objective truth. That's a fact. Um, they are left. They are democratic. And that ju it, it just, again, I can see where... The president, the presidential nominees are going to do everything to butter up the press and make themselves look good. I get it. But for the press to openly let themselves be bought out so they can get the interview, so they can, you know, f um, get that clout and not necessarily pursue all the issues that their audience, the public, us, needs to know about and maybe even hide a few issues here and there and make the candidate look bad. And rather, they'd rather cover the good things that the candidate's done to make the candidate look good. And they're sacrificing part of the truth, so they'll have that clout with that person because that person, you know, they've shaken hands, they've had conversations, they've gone to dinner with these people before. And it's, that part is, that part is sickening. You can be friends with someone and still be objective with them. You can still tell them, you know, hey, you're doing something wrong, I don't agree with this. You don't have to go along with everything someone says in order to be their friend. If you... If you're really someone's friend, you're going to tell them how you feel. You're going to tell them the objective truth, at least how you see it and how you understand it currently, even if it offends them and even if they don't like it. And if they're a real friend, they're going to stick around. They may not agree with you. They may not, uh, they may not do as you say, but they'll at least listen to you. They'll let you get your words in. And, you know, it may be just that, dude, you're stupid, shut up. But they listen to you. They don't just go, as someone who just goes along with what you say and what you believe, like, oh yeah, that's right, oh yeah, that's right, I haven't thought about that way. Yeah, that's probably right. That's a yes man. That's all that is. So shame on the media for that. That is really and truly disgusting. So those are the two primary candidates, the Republican and the Democratic Party presidential nominees. And they both have some, I, I didn't even cover... Any good points on either one of them? Um, well, I did say Trump speaks his mind, so, and I said that that's something I respect. So, that, that's there you go. That's a positive. Um, since I'm a loudmouth myself, I appreciate other loudmouths. I just wish he was a better informed loudmouth. But he's a loudmouth, so that's a that's a positive in his corner. Hillary Clinton's positive. She had her husband was the president of the United States, no matter how crappy he was. And no matter how unfaithful he was, that, like, honestly, the fact that he was unfaithful bugs me a lot more than Donald Trump's words. The fact that he was definitively unfaithful and then lied to the American people about it. That offends me far more than words coming out of any other man's mouth. The man actually performed actions. That's offensive to me. Nonetheless, I'm going to get some positives out here. She does have a husband who was in office and he did it for and he did it for 8 years. So, I mean, there you go. You've got that experience and she's been a senator in New York. Um I kind of I want to criticize so many things, but I'm trying to focus on positives here. She also has many, many years of political experience. She's not just a businesswoman, she is a lawyer by trade. So she is much more prone to political issues and political parties than Donald is. Way more experience, despite the bad stances she's done. She has the experience. So those are the two main presidential nominees. I'm obviously not satisfied with either one of them. And moving on, um, right now I typed into Google, who are the presidential candidates of 2016? We also have Gary Johnson of the Libertarian Party and Jill Stein of the Green Party. Now, <coughs> I didn't look very heavily into them. Um, I'll get into that in just a minute. I will. What I the, I don't have much to say about Jill Stein. I haven't researched her very much. The Green Party is they're more progressive than Democratic. They're they're way more left than Hillary Clinton. And I I generally lean very very right. Uh, like my conserv my coming out conservative Christian series has attested to, and if you listen to any of my preaching videos or the few random video game videos where you know something political or religious comes up, 
I lean very to the right. So, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson, I don't tend to agree with them on a lot of issues. They Neither one of them seem to have the reputations Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton have. But they lean more to the left than Hillary. Some people would disagree with me about, as far as Gary Johnson on that. What, what was it that I looked up on him? He is societally liberal and financially conservative. I'm pretty sure that's what I read on him. I still looked over the issues that he stood for, and I, I really wasn't a fan of them. So, But I do wish they would let Gary Johnson and even Jill Stein, I wish they would let them in on the debates. I really wish they would give them a chance to not just have the Donald Trump and the Hillary Clinton, but let other bigger minor parties, let them in on the debates too, or at least... You know, have like, I don't know, some kind of television debate where the minor parties get to address the issues and talk to the audience and talk to the American people. And that kind of, that leads into, that leads into, uh, I was like, I'm still not, I'm going to get into my own thing after one more step. And this other step is, if ever there was a time for a third party candidate to be voted in, it would be this election. Never have we needed a third-party candidate more than we have needed it in this election here. My gosh, I wish I wish they would let the minor, the bigger minor parties debate. Um, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, maybe a few of the other parties, or at least those two parties. Put them on TV. Put them on debates. Let the American people hear a third option, because right now we need a third option more than we've ever needed it before. And that leads me into the guys, please vote, please vote, please vote, don't give up on the system, don't not vote because it's all a giant show and it's all rigged to begin with and the vote doesn't matter. I do not believe that. The votes are still tallied. Despite the problems that the, that the Electoral College has, despite the binary, basically binary system that this country has, it's one or the other, Republican or Democrat. It's one of two parties, always has been. Right now, it looks like it always will be, despite all those issues and the, despite the fact that the popular vote should probably be what determines the president, <clears throat> especially now that we have the technology to do that in a much more fair, accurate, and honest way. Popular vote should pretty much definitively be the way that the voting system should work now. But despite all those issues, we do still live in a democracy here in the United States. We do still get to voice our opinion. And especially to any of my brothers and sisters in Christ who are listening to this. Guys, we have an obligation to live all of our lives for God, for his kingdom, and to try to bring heaven to earth. That is one of the things we're called to do as Christians. And since we live in the country, those of us who are Americans, my brothers and sisters who live in America with me, since we live in a country where we have a say in who leads us, I don't believe it's all, I mean, is a lot of it rigged and is a lot of it a game? Yes, a lot of it is a game. The, uh, the leaks on Hillary's campaign show that the, the players are playing the game. Um, and it's not something we've never known before. It's just now we have very definitive communicative proof that it's there. But we've, let's be honest, we've all known, whether you're right or left, we've all known that that's always been the way it was. It's not a matter of it's just a game. And our vote has no say. Our vote... I do believe still matters. It's still heard. It does still count for something. So please vote this upcoming election in November. Please cast your ballot. You don't have to agree with me. You can vote for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or Gary Johnson or Jill Stein or do a write-in. Um, and don't do a write-in of Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or Emu Hakure, or Inuyasha, or Goku. Don't, no fictional characters, please. Vote for someone who's actually in a party. Vote for someone who's actually running for president. I do not believe that a third party vote is unimportant. I don't believe it makes no difference whatsoever. I was actually, I was actually watching um, the Young Turks earlier on yesterday, and he, they, I don't know, I just, I really like the way they broke a few things down. Uh, it's a really, I have to kind of shout out the Young Turks on this. I completely disagree with them on so many levels. They're progressive. I am pretty much ultra conservative. So I'm on the exact opposite end of the spectrum 
of the, I want to make, I'm trying to make my hands go in the camera frame and it's confusing my brain. Ah. I'm on exact opposite ends of the spectrum of this them, but there's some intelligent folks there and they do some, they do some good news. They do some good reporting and they don't apologize for where they stand. And even though I completely disagree with them and they're wrong, uh, I can respect the fact that they don't apologize and that they live their lives loudly and the fact that they speak their minds and have some decent insight on several issues. Again, don't agree with them on a lot of points. Doesn't mean that I can't see where they're coming from. It doesn't mean that what they say is dumb. It just me and it doesn't mean it's invalid. It simply means that I hold a different perspective and a different opinion. And so they were they were talking about how that it is really a binary system that the vote is kind of or one person, one person, not all of them, one person said that a vote for anyone other than a Republican or a Democrat is a wasted vote. And I disagree with that. I guess the, the thought process would be you know, only when one of those two parties crumble you, can another party stand up and take that party's place. And then we'll go, we'll stay on the two party system. But simply one party will crumble and collapse, and then some other party will rise up to take its place. I can see the logic by what because of why he said it, because of the way American politics really has always been run. By the way, there's always been a basic dichotomy in the voting system based on the rules and the game and how it works. But I personally do not want to wait until the country completely breaks down to vote for someone that I really believe in, a third party candidate that I really, really enjoy. Now, I won't deny I am debating I'm still debating maybe voting for one of the two mainliners, and I'll get into that in just a minute. <clears throat> but I'm, I, I'm not throwing out the possibility of voting for one of them because the system is so one or the other. And I can see why people would think, you know, it's a wasted vote to vote for the third party, but my thought is my vote does count. It does matter, and I'd rather start voting my opi my true opinion now for a candidate that I think isn't just the lesser of two evils, but actually might be a good candidate now, instead of waiting for this country to crash and burn. And then it's too it's you know even when we can finally vote in a third party at that point, so much has been destroyed and so much has been lost. They're more or less picking up the pieces. I'd rather not wait that long to vote for my third party candidate. Last election, I voted for another party. Now it's time to talk to you about my party. The party that I personally actually like. Um, I like what they have to say, and it's the Constitution Party. And in essence, um, to very briefly summarize it, um, it's an evangelical political dream. They're pro-life. They are pro-marriage of one man and one woman. They even want to. Con they're one of the guys who back up the um, president, the constitutional amendment to define marriage as one man and one woman. So it is anti-gay rights, as I am anti-gay rights. Um, it, it's it has a very strong stance on how taxation could go. It has a strong stance on illegal immigration and putting a huge stop to that. Um, something a little bit more realistic than making the Mexicans themselves build a wall. Uh, <laughs> again, I appreciate, I like someone speaking their mind, but could we make it a little more intelligible and a little more realistic and possible? Anyway, <clears throat> and I know a lot of you guys, you know, don't agree with the Constitution Party. I know YouTube in particular doesn't seem the most right wing of all platforms. But there are some people out there that agree with me. And if there were hardly anyone that agreed with me, I would still speak my mind, speak what I believe to be the truth, and I would still say what I believe to be right. So, you know, if you want more, um, if you want to know a little bit more about the Constitution Party, they do have a presidential candidate. You can look it up. You can see where they stand. And very, very sadly, because of the way the voting system works in America, right now there are several states where they're not going to be on the ballot. The Constitution Party is only a write-in. And some states, um, they're not on the ballot at all. And I guess those states, um, you can't even, 
Yeah, I'm looking, I am looking at a map and a graph right now. I guess there are some states where write-ins aren't allowed. I don't know. I didn't look that up ahead of time of this video. But it's just like, nope, in these states, you can't vote for anyone not on the ballot. It's like it excludes a write-in. But on several, several states, the Constitution Party is only a write-in. So I'm hoping that by the time the election comes, I'll be able to vote for the Constitution Party. Because I really want a third party to vote for. Again, I'd like to vote for a party that I really like. I like their stances. I like where they stand. I like what they stand for. I'd like to vote for a third party now, like I did in the last election, before this nation crumbles, before the political system collapses in on itself. I'd like to go ahead and start voting for a third party so we, so later on down the road that third party doesn't just have you know, the, the, the scraps that fell off the table when the dinner plates were, you know, coming nice and full. I don't like the thought of an America where basically we're in another depression or, you know, everything is ba just, you know, the, the, the financial and economic state of the country is just falling to pieces because no one took action in time. <clears throat> I'd like to vote for the third party um, immediately. I still may vote... Um, for, for Trump or Clinton, and at this point, you can probably guess who I'm going to vote for. Between, the, if I was only given the two choices, I had absolutely no other say. It would be for Trump, um, at the very least. He, and despite his flip flopping on the issue, from what I can tell, as of right now, he is pro life, and that's a very, very big deal to me. I am essentially, and I think I've said this on the video, on my videos before. I'm essentially a one issue voter, um, and to be very blunt and to not sugarcoat this at all. If you believe that killing babies is okay, and I do believe that from conception, that that's a human life. Um, so, t so getting rid of the fetus, um, dissolving the embryo, in my opinion, is murder. And if you believe that that isn't murder, if you believe that that is okay, or you don't believe that that's a human life, then I am at such an op opposing end of that, I can't possibly vote for that. So, Donald Trump at the moment is pro-life. I'll consider voting for him just because the system is so two-party. But he's still not a really good candidate. I'd still rather not vote for him. So, the big, at the end of this video, what I want, I, I, I'll, get, I'll get to the Jesus part in just a minute because this is in place of a Sunday sermon. My biggest encouragement, guys, is go out there, vote, make your voice, you know, raise a ruckus with your ballot, with your vote. Throw it in there. Let your opinion be known. Um, let your opinion be known on social media. Type in the comments how, you know, you know, Brandon, you're absolutely right. Then it's the time for a third party. Or maybe, Brandon, you really should vote for Trump. Uh, you know, he's... You know, he's, he's, he doesn't have nearly as much bad on him as you think he does. Or, Brandon, you are so completely idiotic. How, how dare you think in such right-wing ways? What's wrong with your brain, you stupid Christian? You know, type in your comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, make your opinion known. That's one of the reasons that I encourage hit the like or the dislike button at the end of my videos. Because whether it, you like it or you don't, live your life loud. Make your opinion known. Make your opinion count and make it as loud and as viable as you possibly can. So, I really want to vote third party. I really want to vote Constitution Party. By the way, the man's name who heads up the Constitution Party, as soon as I have this page pulled up, I have this page pulled up, where are you? Let's go to the home page. Daryl Castle. Daryl Castle, 2016 for president. He's the one running as the presidential nominee for the Constitution Party. And if he stands for all the things the Constitution Party on their site says they stand for, that they stood for four years ago, he would by far be the candidate that I would vote for. And very strongly considering voting for him. And, to throw, and since this is the Sunday message, and I always end that with an invitation to accept Jesus, the way I'm going to end this is, guys, please remember... Please remember in the book of Proverbs that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and he turns it whithersoever he will. And remember Romans 13 that God appoints all who are in authority. While our opinion matters, while our votes matter, you want to say the system is rigged and our votes don't matter? 
in one sense, I could say more strongly than you that the system is rigged and our votes don't matter because my God is sovereign. Jesus is going to do what Jesus is going to do whether we like it or can help it or not. You talk about being in control. Jesus really is in control of this election and every other ruler on the face of the planet. God is in control. And I want to give you a chance. I know that there hasn't been really any preaching or Jesus stuff here, but I want to give you a chance here at the end to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior because the Lord may be tugging on your heartstrings in one way or the other. It may have nothing to do with what I've said, but you just know you need Jesus right now. And you know you're in a place where you need the Son of God to save you from your sins. So ask Him. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Tell Him that you believe that He died on the cross for you, shedding His blood for your sin, and that you believe He rose, he rose again from the dead three days later, guaranteeing you eternal life in heaven, and that you need His forgiveness. And if you want a prayer to follow along those lines, um, by all means put it in your own words, but if you want a prayer to follow, follow me in this prayer and say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I've done wrong. And I need you right now. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you rose again. I want you to forgive my sin. Make me new. Make me yours. And thank you for hearing this prayer. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, you are now a child of God. You are now a part of the kingdom of light. And you have a king who was not voted in and who will never be voted or usurped out. You are a part of the everlasting kingdom of God now. And you are a part of a kingdom that when this world and all of its systems and governments fade away, this one won't. This one really will endure forever. Welcome to that kingdom. Please grab a Bible. Read just a little bit of it every day. You want to get to know your new God and the new God you have a relationship with. Reading the Bible is going to be the way to do it. Find a church. Find some people who are also Christians like you. Find some people who agree that Jesus Christ is Lord and they need Him in their lives. And just, it's a, the, one of the best ways to build yourself up in faith, to find friends of, of new common interests for you. And, and pray just a little bit every day, whether it's a thank you God, I woke up today, or a God, help me, I woke up today. Is some people are in different situations and scenarios of life. Pray to Him. Talk to Him. That will also really deepen your relationship with God. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. And for anyone who stuck through to the very end, thank you so, so much for listening to me talk about my thoughts on this party, on, on the whole party situation, the whole presidential election situation. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to me. I want to get it off my chest. I want to put my opinion out there. I want to give my two cents and throw it out into the crowd. Again, I want to live my life loud. I want to make my thoughts known. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. And God bless.